Grace Family Church. It's Christmas in less than two weeks and we can't wait to welcome you to our services. Here are all the details. This year, more than ever, we all need a good reminder of the love, joy, peace and hope of Christ. So you and your family are invited to Christmas at Grace online. Your kids are also invited to join us as we've got some fun planned for them too. So let your world know and join us for the Christmas we've all been waiting for. Grace Kids are on a Christmas adventure. They are learning all about the meaning of Christmas. Jesus, God's greatest gift to us. Continue the conversation at home by using the Faith at Home content on our website and app. Whether you lead a team, are part of a small group, or you want to become a lay counselor at Grace, you can sign up for the Wholeness Counseling Training course starting in January. This 10-week course will equip you with practical skills and counseling training and will be held online and in person. Get in touch with Grace Counseling for more info about the prerequisite wholeness course too. If you need a reminder about any of these details, make sure you've downloaded our Grace app where you'll find everything you need to know and all the info about what's happening at Grace. Welcome to our Grace Family Church online campus. We are so excited that you are joining us from wherever you are in the world. Speaking of that, let us know right now in the comment section where you are tuning in from so that one of our online hosts can connect with you. If you are a parent, we have our very own, our very own online experience for your kids. And they are currently in a new series. Uh, they are getting to know what the real meaning of Christmas is. That God loved us so much. He sent his son Jesus into the world. So if you're a parent, don't let your kids miss out on this one. Our host will pop the link in the comment section now as I speak. You can put that service on for them on another device, or you can watch it later in the week with them. For now, we're gonna go into a time of singing, and we have Sherman, one of our volunteer worship leaders, leading us. Hi, and welcome to today's service. We're so glad that you can join us today. Whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, whatever it is, join us as we worship and praise God together. Let's sing it together. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sin is reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born the Godhead see hail the incarnate deity pleased as man with the man to dwell Jesus our Emmanuel hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King 
forward to Christmas, I'd like to read this verse from John 1. It's talking about Jesus and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. When you speak, the darkness has to bow. Confusion has its final hour When you speak The mountains rise and fall And tears down every wall Around me When you speak You breathe upon the dust You come alive in us When you speak, you silence every fear And we feel your spirit here Around us, let there be light Let there be light Until it fills up every space Come and have your way Let there be light Let there be light just one word and I am changed Come and have your way And when you speak You breathe upon the dust You come alive in us when you speak, you silence every fear And we feel your spirit here around us Let there be light, let there be light Until it fills up every space Come and have your way, let there This one word and I am changed Come and have your way And let there be light Let there be light Until it fills up every space Come and have your way And let there be light Let there be light Just one word and I am changed We will 
Your breath. 
And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Lord, it's your breath that is in our lungs, Lord. Father, we thank you for the breath that we have, that we can sing and worship and praise you in the way that we do. So even as we continue today with the service, Father, I pray you be with us, Lord. Prepare our hearts for what we're about to hear in the word and bless our time together now, we pray. In no other name but the name of Jesus, we pray. We're going to remain in this attitude of worship as we get ready to bring our tithes and give our offerings. So if this is the part of the service where you normally give, you'll see the details pop up on the screen or one of our online hosts will put the details in the comments section. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for your faithfulness and your provision during this time, uh, these tough economic times. We we pray that you would continue to uh, provide for us and meet us where we're at. We just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Friends, Christmas at Grace is always something to look forward to. And this year is no different. Check this out so that you know what to expect. Christmas at Grace is a real celebration. It's time for us to sing carols, have fun together, and hear the timeless message of Jesus. You're invited to Christmas at Grace this year. You can join us for our online service, which will be available to watch on Christmas Eve and at any time on Christmas Day. From the moment you log on, you'll be met by a team of online hosts who will be ready to welcome you on Facebook, YouTube, and graceonline.tv. At Grace, we say, come as you are. So whether you're in your Christmas PJs or you're dressed to the nines with your entire family in tow, getting ready for lunch, you're welcome at Grace. And we are so excited that we can be in your home with you. The Christmas service at Grace is for the whole family. So your kids can watch with you because we've got some really fun elements planned for them up front. Whether you love or hate carols, whether your family only attends church on Christmas, there's nothing like Christmas cheer to brighten up the year that we've all had. The service is an hour long and is made up of creative imagery, music, a compelling message about Jesus, and there's always an element of fun and games involved. Wherever you are in the world, let's remember what we have to celebrate. 
This is what we've been waiting for. Peace, hope, joy, love, Christmas. From our family to yours, you're invited to Christmas at Grace. The online campus team cannot wait to welcome you and your family to our Christmas service. Our service will go live at 5.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, but you can watch it at any time on demand after that. So maybe you want to watch it on Christmas Eve so that you can get to your Christmas breakfast on time, or maybe you want to open presents early on Christmas so you can watch it later in the morning. However, you can watch it at whatever time suits you. For now, we're gonna go into our message and we have Wayne, one of our co-senior pastors, sharing with us today on week three of Waiting on the World to Change. What keeps you up at night? What disturbs your soul? What gets you making endless speeches in your head, speeches that you'll never make? What robs you of your peace of mind and peace of heart? One of the greatest killers of peace is broken relationships. If you're like me, you can tackle big things if your relationships are intact, but a broken relationship can suck the joy and the energy out of you uh, and the smallest challenge becomes big. I was chatting to Deb Van Gavin of our counseling ministry, and she says that most of the, our counseling ministry's time is working with relational breakdown, marriages, children, siblings. We've advanced technologically, but, but not relationally. We can put a man on the moon, but we can't get on with the person next to us. At times, we wish they were on the moon, quite frankly. At times, we are so hurt that we live our lives angry at the people we love. Worse still, we can be so hurt for so long that we live our lives indifferent to the people we once loved. This is the most dangerous relational place we can find ourselves in. We feel nothing. We're hypothermic. We're so cold we can't warm up. We can no longer warm up at all. The shouting and the fighting has ceased because the energy is gone, and yet there is no peace. We can have so hurt others that we live our lives in guilty isolation. We can have been so neglectful that we live our lives in regretful despair. We are unable to reclaim the lost years, to kind of go backwards and do it all again. We are waiting for him to change. We are waiting for her to change. We are waiting for them to change and then, then we will be at peace. Christmas every year and we're in the season of Advent, Christmas every year seems to highlight the broken relationships. There is a sense that it should not or it need not be this way. The longing for the things to be different is amplified as Christmas approaches. If only they would change. If only we, uh, then we would be at peace and things would be better. And so we wait and we wait for the world to change. But what if this Christmas, the wedding can be over? What if we simply do things differently? Over 2,700 years ago, Isaiah, a young man, a politician, a prophet, he writes to people who are living in despair and in darkness, and they're waiting. The people who walk in darkness, Isaiah writes, will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. 
So today as we continue the series Waiting on the World to Change, I could talk about world peace. And there is much to talk about in a divided and an angry world. But I want to get into your heart and into your home, if you'll allow me. You see, this Christmas and every Christmas, a child is born to us, and he will be called the Prince of Peace. Born into our hearts, born into our homes, born into our world, and he's the Prince of Peace. Peace is shalom. Shalom is where everything is the way it should be. It's where everything is made whole. It's where things that have been broken are put back together again. Shalom is where there is human flourishing, where, where we live a, 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 a full and abundant life. It's a word that suggests the presence of God in our everyday lives and our relationships. It's what we wait for and long for. Now, our lived experience may be different or even opposite to this experience of shalom or peace. It's diabolos, which is the opposite of shalom. It's where diabolos is where we get the word diabolical from, or the Spanish, Spanish word diablo, which means devil. And it literally means to divide or to separate. If peace is bringing everything together, diabolos is separating everything. Diabolos is where we see division. It literally is interchangeable in the scriptures with the word evil or even in some cases devil. C.S. Lewis in the book, The Screwtape Letters, which I read so long ago and, and enjoyed so much, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the letters of an old experienced demon writing to a young inexperienced demon, advising him and instructing him how to really mess these human beings up totally. Now this is the advice. Screwtape writes to the young demon, to e for evil to win, all you have to do is get two people, a mother and a son, a brother and a sister, a father and a child, spouses. All you need to do is get two people to turn away from each other, thinking, both thinking that they are right. Then, says Screwtape, your work is done. They'll never turn back. The relationship is broken, never to be restored. Diabolos, there is chaos. Now that turning away may be an instant, a flashpoint, a fight we can name and describe. Perhaps it comes to mind for you. Or it may be a slow, imperceptible, lifelong turning away. It's in our minds and our hearts, a justified turning away. And so we turn and we stand back to back with the ones we love, broken, but at least we're right. <laughs> we stand back to back with the people we love, broken, but we are right. No shalom, no peace, but at least we are right and we wait for them to turn and they won't and they don't. Diabolos. Jesus, the one born to us whose name is Prince of Peace, talks to his friend on the eve of his death. John, his best friend forever, records this conversation. Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus speaks of his gift and his gift is peace. It's shalom. Shalom never means simply the absence of trouble. It means everything which makes for our highest good. I leave you with this gift, says Jesus. The peace which the world offers us is the peace of escape, the peace which comes from avoidance of troubles and from refusing to face uh, uh, things and difficult things. The peace which Jesus offers us is the peace of conquest through the trouble. No experience of life can ever take it from us and no sorrow, no danger, no suffering can ever make it less. It is independent of the outward circumstances of our lives. It's, it, it, it speaks of the truth that underneath all things are the everlasting arms of God who is our defense and our protection and our wisdom. It's a peace that empowers rather than paralyzes. It's a peace that acts rather than waits. Just a little later, Jesus would pray for his friends and, and, and all who would believe in him as a result. In other words, you and me. 
and others who will come after us. Um, and he, he's speaking of, of his love for the world and his love for them. This is his prayer. Father, may they be one. May they be at peace. May they be united in a bond of love like, like we are, Father, Son, and Spirit, speaking of the Trinity. This is his heart's desire for you and for me, that we would be one. It's peace. It's togetherness. <clears throat> after his crucifixion, after his friends betrayed him, denied him, fell asleep when he needed them, and ran away in the face of danger, he appears to them. <laughs> and they're troubled, and they're afraid. You know, earlier he'd said, don't be troubled, don't be afraid. But they are troubled, and they are afraid. And that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. They've experienced the crucifixion and the horror of hatred. It's all been in front of them. And of all the greetings Jesus could greet them with, this is what he says. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. Shalom. In other words, he's saying, my will for you, my prayer for you, is everything that makes for your highest good. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Kind of a strange response to the wounds, but they recognized him. And again he said, now twice, peace be with you. Shalom. My will for you, Jesus says, my prayer for you is everything that makes for your highest good. And as John records, as the Father sent me, Jesus says, so I'm sending you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What an encounter. They are given a ministry of life and death, of peacemaking. So I leave you with one word today. Turn. You can wait for the world to change, or you can turn. I'm going to light this candle, and you no doubt have a candle in your house. And I would love you to light it every day of the week. Let me see if I can get this right. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, and he shall be called Prince of Peace. In the presence and warmth of God's love and light, and the candle is but a symbol of God's love and his warmth and his presence, a symbol of God's spirit in a sense. In the presence of God's love and his light, turn. Turn to God. God has turned toward you. God greets you just where you are with these words. Peace be with you. Shalom. God says, I will, I will for you everything that makes for your highest good. If you find that difficult to believe because you carry deep wounds, others have hurt you and you have hurt yourself, and you have hurt others. Jesus, who says, peace be with you, shows you his wounds, his hands and his side. They are wounds of love. I will for you everything that makes for your highest good, and I'll give my life for you, says Jesus. Allow his wounds this, today to speak to yours, and the invitation is turn to God. You have made, turned away from him. You may never have turned toward God. And it's as simple as this. God, I turn towards you. I accept your love. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your gift of peace. I accept your spirit of love and power to live. It's a prayer and a position of your heart. And I have no doubt a peace that defies understanding will be your experience. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, says, Peace, I leave you. I leave you with this gift. Peace be with you. Turn to God. 
Second, turn back. Who have you turned away from? You are angry and you are right. You are hurt and the wounds run deep and you are cold. You're waiting for them to turn or perhaps you're waiting for them to burn, quite frankly. You wish them no harm, but you certainly don't wish for them their highest good. In fact, it pains you when they succeed. You feel that at times? There is diabolos, there is separation. The people we turn from are often not our enemies, but they are the very people we love. You see, the ones we love can hurt us most deeply. The Prince of Peace prays for you and me. May they be one. So who have you turned away from? Some years ago, the Grace staff set in place a way for two people to turn towards each other if they found that they are turning away. You see, yes, working for a church at times is robust and painful. Some people think it's all praise songs and fluffy clouds. You should see the people I work with. <laughs> Just a little joke. The staff of grace often see me at my worst. So if someone comes into my office and says, we need to light a candle, then I know here comes trouble. And indeed it is trouble. The way we've said if you've got something to say to someone and you feel a bit uh, uh, afraid of saying it, take a candle, light it, and say, let's over this warmth and light of this candle, the presence of God and His Spirit, let's talk to each other. So when someone says, let's light a candle, I know, oops, here we go. It's trouble. But it's trouble that can be dealt with in the light and warmth of God and His Spirit. Jesus shows them His wounds. And he breathes on them and he says, receive my spirit. If you forgive, they are forgiven. If you don't, they are not. I will will for you your highest good and I pray that they will be, I pray that you will be one. No separation. Forgive and be forgiven. Turn back. It's shalom where everything is made whole. Now the turning back may cost you your pride. The benefit is peace. It far outweighs the pride. The cost, it may cost you your pain and you've you've got used to it and you actually like it a little. Um, And I don't want to trivialize your pain. It may cost you your pain because things may be whole. But the benefit is peace. So turn back. If you've turned away, turn back. So I invite you to light a candle each day of this week. And... uh, Turn to God. Turn to God and simply receive his gift of peace. I leave you with a gift, says Jesus. It's the gift of peace. And then turn back. And perhaps even as I've spoken, someone has come to mind for you. Um, It's invoked all kinds of feelings for you. And perhaps you say that's a little dangerous for me to even think about that. But the God of peace would have you be one. It's what he prayed, and it's what he died for. So turn back, and perhaps as you light the candle in the week, you simply ask God to help you by his Spirit, for he breathes his Spirit on us, um, by his Spirit to help you to turn back. And who knows, perhaps we need wait no longer uh, for others to act, but we might well be instruments of peace as we turn to God and we turn back to the ones we've turned away from. Who knows what this Christmas might look like. It would be my privilege to pray with you and for you. So let's pray together. Lord, as we sit in our homes and we simply hear your offer of a gift, the gift of peace. As we simply hear you greet us with the words, peace be with you. We hear you say that you wish for us, will for us, pray for us, everything that will contribute to our highest good. And I pray, Lord, for everyone sitting in their homes that we would in fact be 
at peace this morning, this day, this afternoon. Breathe on us, Lord, as we receive the gift of your spirit, your love, your peace. I pray for those who today may even be saying, I'm going to turn back to you, God. Well, I'm going to turn to you, God, for the first time. Trusting in your love, your forgiveness, your gift of peace, your promise for our lives, a life that is a flourishing life. I pray for all who would simply turn to you in their hearts and minds today. May they be filled with a peace that defies understanding and with the power and wisdom to bring healing to their lives and, and to the lives of others. I pray for relationships, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, spouses and partners, children and parents, siblings, friends. I pray, Lord, that in the week to come, in the light of candles, and your warmth and your love, there would be a healing of relationships that make this Christmas so real. For unto us, Lord, you were born the Prince of Peace. I pray these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I close with an ancient greeting. May the peace of the Lord be with you. If this message impacted you, there are a few ways that you can respond. The first is if you felt a stirring in your heart or you responded to the prayer that Wayne prayed or you, you want to turn towards God, why don't you let us know in the comment sections or why don't you email me at dylan at grace.org.za so that we can help you take your next step. The second way that you can respond is through liking this message on whichever platform you're on or clicking the share button if you're on Facebook or subscribing to our YouTube channel. This helps us take the message into your worlds to reach people we could never reach. The third way that you can respond is through your generosity. Your generosity helps us take this message of Jesus to the ends of the earth. And the fourth and final way is by joining our Facebook group. This platform helps you to be more connected to the online community of grace. Friends, thank you for joining us today and lending us into your world. See you next Sunday.